spiritual as a label and what that label spiritual means. Too many people use labels. And um, this is a little bit of a reality check, like grounding it back to the body, bringing it back to the knowledge that is here. Yes, I do believe that we had extraterrestrial and other dimensional influence, and I believe that our artifacts are there as proof there, and even energetic proof is here that this took place. This can be measured, this can be validated to a certain degree. Certain people also believe um, that there's more than what the light spectrum allows you to perceive. But there's also the thing is what your safety is, is you are a conscious reflector projector, uh, you know. There's a certain reality that you have. There's people that experience something like MIB or black helicopters or certain stuff or uh, nightmares or spooks. Well, that could also be that the reality of their perception has been hacked, meaning that their belief system is so convincing that it makes it appear to be real. To me, when people say, well, there's a ghost in my house, and I do believe in ghosts, and I had visions, and I had contact, where I question the contact and I question what's happening to me and I seek others to validate what I see. So far I had experiences where I had nine people behind me seeing the same thing that I saw without me explaining that what I saw. Some people want to base it on genetics but I think that's BS. That has nothing to do with what the frequencies uh, my cells emanate which I believe we can tap into that too magnetically but if somebody can specifically describe something that can be seen and the next one can see, then the next one. And uh, supplements are not always uh, required, <coughs> such as going psychedelic to, to see that. It has to do with your op openness and how this tuner is being tuned to what you want to perceive. My point is, for the following, is we have a lot, a lot of so-called um, wannabe gurus uh, that claim miracles after you do a certain diet or a certain practice and they promise something and it never takes place. It's like, evaluate the things that you acquire online, how they work for you and in what time they work for you. Let's say, as an example, and it's not to big myself up, just to bring you fact in, there was a, a lady online that had a dog that would just go crazy every now and then. So I kinda profiled or tapped in or whatever you wanted and said, well, it has something to do with the, the, the dog has anxiety and the uh, parasympathetic nervous system doesn't kick in because it, the, the dog cannot be in its bliss and I try something out. So I know that the nanospherical quartz sand that I put in my keys emits so much light as in photonic, as in measurable, as in not in placebo. Like if you do biophotonic imaging, you put the key in there, you will see a considerable result of a light aura that the regular crystal does not emanate. <coughs> so we took a little pendant, put it in resin, mixed the sand in the resin, and put it on the dog's collar. And the dog, she called me, she was like, yo, this is amazing, my dog, just calm down. Which makes me think, <coughs> maybe in the future I want to <coughs> um, create something for pets that will calm them down. Like if you have pets that are like irritated, not yet, so please don't ask. People always rush me when I have <laughs> these ideas for dimensions, which is nice and overwhelmingly good, but I want to have something that really actually makes sense where I can say I have 10 to 20 people that would validate that it really works, the dog calms down. So I even myself ordered some stuff online uh, that I used, like a mineral, and it works for me, and it immediately worked for me. So that's what I go by as a reality check. It's like don't go for belief structures that have no proof or no effect on you. Go for what works for you, what becomes tangible, or you can make tangible for you. You gotta get out of, I believe, into what's promised in the afterlife. That's the old paradigm. When you die, you go to heaven, all of this. You go to heaven here, in the body, you ascend in the body, everything takes place in here. You regulate your system in here, you can feel immortal for the moment in time here. It's all a moment of. Uh, perception and how you perceive reality. So many people we have witnessed, especially in spiritual cities, um, they, it's like a spiritual predator. They, uh, they need followers, they need members to validate their existence. 
And uh, sometimes I question these, these members and I talk to them. So what do you have? So what is actually your planetary service? Are you a gardener? Are you planting trees? Are you building anything? Are you creating anything? They create nothing. All they have is a lot of theory about what spirituality is. Things that sound nice, they may be applicable for them what they learned. But I don't believe in sitting on a mountain doing this wishing the world to be a better place and the change will take place. I believe in action. I believe in creation. I feel and I have the result and if, if no one gets up, nothing ever gets done. So if, if I do not get up and make changes in my life, as in what I explained in my other movie video, The Paradigm Shift. You want to shift your paradigm. Paradigm means the belief system of the habits that you have in the subconscious. You want to change that. In order to make a change, you got to change these habits. Let's say, it's not to blame the smoke or the coffee drinker. Let's say you're drinking coffee and you're smoking. You can't talk high dimensional aspects because you still have an addiction. Let's say you had a coke problem or a speed or heroin problem. You went to rehab and now everything is, now everything is smokes and cigarettes and it's like this and you, you're seeking the thrill and you're restless. That means you're not rehabilitated. You're not healed. You put the problem under the rug, moved it into another angle, and you don't look at it. But the anxiety is still there. The addiction, it was just moved to another addiction, is still there, you know. And you're still doing what you're not supposed to be doing. And you know it. But you can't get rid of it because in your sub-programming of a belief structure, you're addicted to that. So you create your conflicts within yourself with all these um, fantastic creations of the mind thinking you're psychic but you're not psychic I spoke to people that claim objects move in their house and doors slam well I went to their house guess what nothing happened and trust me again I believe in ghosts and I've seen stuff move that wasn't supposed to move that, that was witnessed by others but if people make claims they, they see stuff and it's just them that might be nanobacterial influence giving you a vision of an illusion that is actually only real for your perception because your belief system is based on that. So spiritual is not equivalent spiritual. Spiritual to me actually is when you not talk so much, I'm a spiritual being, namaste, kumbaya, or whatever, ahau, and all of these words to emulate what others doing, living that. Spiritual to me is actually keeping it real. Can I count on you when I need you? Can I communicate with you in a clear manner? And is there a clear communication taking place? And is there harmony between us? I have one of my best friends, a great inspiration of my life, peace between us. We never talk politics. We never talk about races. He, uh, he is uh, Swedish. I'm half, he's Swedish Norwegian. I'm half American, uh, Nath, uh, Apache, uh, German. And we keep the peace, we keep the politics, we keep it peaceful, you know? And um, that is what you want to keep between people without having to mention, oh, you're so spiritual. The plumber that comes to your house might be more spiritual than the most spiritualistic, list, 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 list guy that runs around in a robe, dresses like Jesus, like the fake image of Jesus, and claims he's so spiritual and everything is, yes. And yeah, and your mind, and then, and the universe, <laughs> you could do all this. That can turn very quick into a circus act because it's a performance. It's not real. I say for as long as I don't see anybody walking over water, you're not walking over water. So don't claim you're walking over water. So there's a lot of people that travel to distant lands and the holy places and have a lot of claims of what downloads you have. Or if you have a download and you can't build anything from it or a construct that is applicable in reality, you have nothing always have to face the fact, where's the progress? You can talk about a car, you can talk about the Lamborghini and how you to drive it, or you can be it or drive it. Not meaning to propagate false materialism or unnecessary materialism, but it is, you know, some people dream, some people don't. It's like, bring your dream in here and become the doer. And by brainwave or brainwave measurement, you can also tell there are people out there that have many, many, many ideas, but nothing manifests. That becomes useless to a planet that actually needs manifest. We're in a dimensional construct 
that requires to create tangible objects for us to perceive. That's how we are built. And on, from, from these dimensions on up, and it's a continuing process, continuous process. Earth is ascending continuous. The universe expands continuous. When you pray to God, guess what? He listens. As your cells listen, He listens. God listens with the capacity how you listen to yourself. Um, don't propagate anything distant in the future or a calamity that might come. That would deprive you from living that here in the now. Live in reality, live in the now. Don't wait for any prophecies, you know. We can predict probable timelines and probabilities. Things that can take place if you're going down that road or you're going down that river, there's a waterfall coming, you know. If you don't have your boat in check, you know, you don't stay in the center of the river, river, you might get caught in that current, which can become a probability. And there's nothing psychic about that. That is just common sense. And my German grandma was like a farmer level, and farmers used to know more than city slickers. <laughs> Meaning there's common sense. At the end of the day, what makes sense to you? Does it feel good? Does it feel safe? How is that you can control yourself? It's like don't go out there and try to find a guru and lose yourself in the belief system because it's so easy to be delusional and say, well, it's all up to the invisible folks. Well, right now the invisible folks are not doing what I'm doing right here. They're assisting very faint through the layers of your intuitive perception in what you have to do, but you have to water the plant. The plant doesn't water itself by itself. Some things must be done and put in place. So there are certain laws, rules and regulations based on certain dimension that you have to follow in order to play that game. Um, you can also say, I don't want to participate in a game. That's your freedom of choice. But uh, here's the thing is, I think it is interesting to participate in the universe and see what happens when you participate in things, how the other participants will respond. You don't know that. It's not in your control what their choice will be. You don't know all their storylines. You're not like, you know, some people claim that they can tap into the Akashic Records and pull out some, they, well the Akashic Record is what you plug into, and that is you for your personal script. You can find somebody that can have a permission to tap into what they can actually read in the outer spheres, but you need allowance. And when that clearance comes in, the information will be very intricate, very precise, down to the date. You can backtrace stuff, no more guessworks or pulling cards and leaning psychological tricks on a tarot card that you pull. And nothing against tarot or oracle cards, they may very much make sense. But it has to do with how much allowance do you have in your divine presence to tap into somebody. And how real is that? Not guesswork where you might say yes or it turns you into a yes sayer. It's bring it into a reality that is agreeable with you, tangible, and it makes sense. And you don't have to come back to the human. Don't hang your responsibility on somebody else and say, well, my prayers and it's going to work by itself. You must do the work. You have to develop the, the, the discipline to be that, to be free in your mind and keep it real. What you say is what you do. Don't perform and then do something else. When the camera is off, I'll be the same. I work the same. I talk the same. I don't change. This is not an act. This is my life. So spiritual is keeping it real actually so if i need you or i need to count on you be there that's all there is and on that note namaste